So what happened along about the, you know, 2000, is that solar PV did, took off in terms of production and was now using a lot more of the silicon feedstock. And along about 2005, we actually total went above what our production capacity was. Okay, so what do we do about that? Well, for one thing, we increased silicon, the silicon, basic silicon feedstock capacity. And so you will see that new companies are coming online to produce the silicon. The other thing that was happening is that the solar companies were getting agreements with each other for the silicon feedstock. And a lot of this was coming from China, as a matter of fact. Um, we begin to make better cells. And this is an example of some of the silicon cells that are out there. Uh, these, were, these are the best ones, BP, Saturn, SunPower, and Sanyo. All make a relatively high efficient cell. I won't even go into the device design at this point, but except to say that a lot of things were going on here. You were getting textured surfaces to absorb more light. You were getting point contacts to reduce the dissociation and recombination within the cell. And the combination of all this ended up with a much more efficient solar cell. This is a sun power cell you're seeing there. And that's what's called the sun power point contact cell. It is uh, in the U.S. Uh, it just spun off. Cypress Semiconductor had bought SunPower uh, about five or six years ago. And then SunPower kindly basically outgrew its, uh, <laughs> outgrew its nest, if you will, and spun off into its own entity. Well, the silicon shortage made us do a lot of things. It made us, it made better silicon material utilization, it improved the process, and we made performance improvements. All of these helped in other technologies as well. And people begin to look for alternatives. And now we begin to understand the advent of the first solar rise in production. Okay? In, in many respects, its increase in production capability and subsequent market was a reflection of the silicon shortage. And of course, everyone uh, would have believed that, and I believe that cartoon arose out of a <laughs> Silicon Valley <laughs> publication. <laughs> well, let's go a little further. Let's go over to the thin films and look a little bit at those, and then concentrators, and then some organic things. Well, one of the things that you could predict might happen if you got a technology that was much more highly efficient, for example, or else extraordinarily cheap to make, is that you would dramatically decrease this module production curve. So, it's hard to predict where this might go, but if you look at the cell efficiencies, what you're seeing there are the cells that are now exist. All of these are commercially available. These are copper, indium, gallium, diselenide. That's the pink uh, row there. The high, most efficient cell is 19.9% efficient. Cadmium telluride which are the green cells at 16.5% efficient, and amorphous silicon, which United Solar holds the record at 12.1%. Then, if you look at those cells, this is what the IV characteristics of those cells looks like. Now, in the copper, indium, gallium, diselenide cell, Look at the voltage of these cells. They're about 0.7 volts and a relatively high current. Now, one thing to remember 
is these are small area research cells. These are the top ones that have ever been me measured. This is not what is coming out of the commercial production modules. Here's cad telluride. It's IV characteristic. Notice it has a little higher open circuit voltage and a little lower overall efficiency. But this is basic components. Now, people are asking themselves, well, okay, just how, how plentiful is tellurium? Interesting question. First Solar would say they have plenty of tellurium. They also do their cells, because it is a cadmium, which is a highly toxic element, they do cradle to grave. They recycle all of their solar arrays. So they will insure it for 20 years, you return the cell to them, they will recycle the cadmium. So they are getting around this, you know, this question of being environmentally conscious by actually putting in this return policy. If you look at what's happening in the manufacturing arena, you see that really solar cell companies haven't looked very hard at the manufacturing process, not like the semiconductor industry has done. They are just beginning to take a look at this process, an actual design process, <coughs> a disciplined manufacturing process. And what you see there is first solar. Now, they're doing it all over the place. They have, they, have, uh, they have expanded their Ohio plant. They built a plant in Germany, and they have uh, four plants, four new plants coming online in Malaysia. So you've seen that in their case, they have been focusing somewhat on the manufacturing process. These are the companies that are out there today. They will not all be here five years from now. I can guarantee it. Some have very sound basis for their existence, and some are a little more tenuous. Remember that a lot of money came into the uh, photovoltaic world with the venture capitalist. So these companies, some of them we will see endure, and others I feel sure will fall by the wayside. Applied Materials got into the game by building a, uh, they'll sell you a plant to make a solar cell. <laughs> so they'll just up and ship it to you. Park it on your doorstep and you can start making solar cells. They even come along to show you how to get it up and running. <laughs> so they have, they have uh, invested quite a bit. Uh, into this, this business. There are interesting other applications that are being looked at. One is a sort of printing technology. And Heliovolt is one of these people now for the copper, indium, gallium, diselenide cells. And, and it is a, uh, uh, an interesting manufacturing synthesis that they have there. Now, if you look at the companies that are now emerging, now the background of this cell is, this is crystalline silicon. These are crystalline silicon companies. Look at what is happening in the remaining companies. You see a large growth in amorphous silicon. You see a very substantial growth in copper, indium, gallium, diselenide and a, what I would consider to be probably a reasonable growth in cadmium telluride. There is a lot of projections that some of these emerging companies, the, these polymer cells or organic, inorganic hybrid cells, will make a big difference in the future of photovoltaic modules. Well, now we're back to my part of the world because space because of the limited real estate and the high cost of actually putting something into space, which is roughly $20,000 a pound, uh, you want the best efficiency for your cells. And if you look at the multi-junction 
In this case, it's the concentrators. We have a record now, 40.7% from Boeing. Uh, 